In my neighborhood where I live in Kew Gardens, New York, this past Purim and the days before Purim, there was a terrible snowstorm. And people couldn't get around to give Shalach Mon as well because, you know, the sanitation wasn't picked up, the snow plowing wasn't done. It was a tremendous storm. So for two or three days, they didn't collect the sanitation. Now, two or three days after Purim, it's two o'clock in the morning, and we have a yeshiva in our neighborhood called Yeshiva Shatter, the Rosh Yeshiva of Kalman Epstein. He's a brilliant fellow. He's up at two o'clock in the morning, probably learning, and all of a sudden he hears the sanitation people outside. So his kitchen had a whole bunch of black bags, you know, filled with garbage. He runs outside and he gives it to one of the guys. He says, could you please take this? And the guy says, of course. And the guy says to him, Ex excuse me, sir, are you a rabbi? That's not what he was expecting the sanitation guy should ask him. And uh, he says, who are you? He says, my name is Theodore. He says, are you a rabbi? He says, yeah, I am. He says, rabbi, I have a question. Can I ask you a question? And he's thinking, what kind of question could a sanitation guy have two o'clock in the morning? Right? What Shiloh could he have? So he says to him, Rabbi, my mother died a few hours ago. And I know that she would have wanted to have a Jewish burial. But I'm not religious, and my brother and sister are not religious. My mother wasn't religious. And they want to cremate her. That means they want to burn her in ashes. And I know, even though my mother wasn't religious, but, you know, she lit candles Friday night. We didn't always keep kosher or the Sabbath, but she would want a Jewish burial. Rabbi, what should I do? I didn't even tell them that she died yet. So he said, he's very smart. He said, I'll tell you what to do. It's two o'clock in the morning right now. Nine o'clock in the morning, call the Jewish funeral home and tell them that your mother died. Tell them where the body is. They'll bring it over to the funeral home. Arrange the funeral. And once everything is arranged, call your brother and sister and say, listen, mom died and the funeral is all set for two o'clock this afternoon. And once it's all set, you'll see they won't complain. That's exactly what he does. He calls the funeral home, they pick up the body. One o'clock, he calls Rabbi Epstein. He says, Rabbi, you're a genius. That's what happened. I arranged the whole thing. I called my brother and sister, and they come in at two o'clock for the funeral. Thank you so much. So Rabbi Epstein says, you're very welcome. He says, no, Rabbi, please, I gotta ask you one more thing. You're the only rabbi I know. You think maybe you could come speak at the funeral? He never even knew this lady. He didn't even know this lady existed till two o'clock in the morning. But he's a tzaddik, so he said yes. So I said, what do you say at that funeral? Listen to what he said. He said, people reap in death what they sowed in life. Now this woman, she felt a closeness to God. She may not have been totally religious, but she lit the candles Friday night. So she had a connection to Judaism. So Hashem, God, orchestrated that she should merit, that she should have a Jewish burial. And then he left. He didn't stay for the Kvura. That was someplace else. And that was that. Then he told me the next day he had to be in Lakewood. And this guy lived in Suffolk County. For those of you who in New York know, that's way out in Long Island. And he traveled from Lakewood to Suffolk County, 160 miles, to go be Menachem Oval, this guy, who he had never seen till the night before. And um, the guy wasn't sitting shiva, but he didn't go to work. And he spent some time with him. He told me he tried to reach him a few times afterwards. He wanted to follow up. The guy never answered the call. Finally, two weeks later, again, he hears the sanitation people outside. Rob Kalman runs outside. He says, guys, where's Theodore? Is he here today? They say, who's Theodore? I say, what do you mean, who's Theodore? He was the guy who was here at 2 o'clock in the morning two weeks ago. Oh, they said, oh, he never comes here. He works in Suffolk County, which is 80 miles away from here. That night, we needed extra hands because the sanitation hadn't been complete. That's the only time he ever worked in the city in his life. He never came here before. Can you imagine that, Ashkocha? The Avishta made it that he should come that night, Dafka, and Rab Kalman should have the sanitation bags in his kitchen. And through that Ashkocha protest, this lady had a Jewish burial. So I was crazy about that story. You see such Ashkocha, the Avishta orchestrate so many different things. So I told it over in Camp Monk this summer. Now my Rebbe, Rab David Cohen, is the Rav of that camp. And he's sitting and listening. I want to show you how Adam Gadol thinks. He comes over to me afterwards, he says, okay, tell me, what's the move on of that story? What's the essence of that story? I said, well, Rebbe, I, I, I think it's obvious, right? Uh, 
Hashgacha brought this. He says, not so much more than that. Listen to you, what he said. He said, how did she make a connection to Hashem? Through fire. She lit the candles Friday night. Because she made a connection with fire, Hashem made sure that fire didn't harm her. Isn't that amazing? That's an Odom Godel. I, I get the chills now, even as I tell it to you.